Understanding the fundamental ways JavaScript works is so important. For example, it probably wouldn't matter how skillfully you solve difficult problems in a coding interview if you messed up some of the fundamental questions. In this tutorial, take a moment to see how well you know these important fundamental concepts. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description. I really appreciate the support. And if you'd like, there are other ways to support the channel, which are linked to in the description as well. For example, you can have access to all the code files for a Patreon support. And there's a link in the description if you're planning to earn script. And finally, for a list of all the tutorials I've done, which are over 200 now, you can go to my website. I recently looked through a Medium article written by Alison Quaglia. I'll link to it in the description and I encourage you to read it. She did a great job at identifying some of the tricky fundamentals that are part of JavaScript. We're going to cover some of these same fundamentals that I see as very important. But check out her article. She covers more than I will here. Now, I'm going to use the same approach Alison did. I will show you a bit of code and then give you a chance to figure out what it does or what it's going to display on the console. If you need to pause while you're figuring it out, do so. And then we'll talk about it and talk about the concept associated with it. All right, let's take a look at that first bit of code that we're going to deal with. Now this bit of code deals with asynchronous code in the set timeout command. So we have a function, show numbers, and we're just logging stuff to the console. But two of those logs come from a set timeout. So what is the order of the numbers that will be logged to the console when show numbers is called? That is the question. And let's go ahead and take a look at what that is in the console. I'm going to open that up. And we get one, four, three, and two. So if we jump back to the code here, obviously this line logs first. Then when we hit this line, it is a set timeout feature. Set timeout is handled by the browser. And so that timing starts happening by the browser. When the timer is done, then this console log statement is placed in the event queue. And when no other JavaScript is running, it will then log that. So it does that line. The next line is also set timeout. So it begins doing that timer. But the time is set to zero. So the timer expires immediately. Then this is added to the event queue. So you might think that this console log statement would happen before this. But it doesn't because the event queue needs to wait until this JavaScript is done before anything in its queue will be executed. So console log happens first and then this is the first thing in the event queue that happens and then this one happens so that's why we get one four three two and as we go through a lot of these concepts i have tutorials on them that i will link to as well so be aware of that and i'll put those in the description section all right let me comment out this one and we'll go to the next one give that one a try so this one has to do with understanding scope and specifically understanding scope for let and const variables. All right. So we have a function about months and then inside that function using let we declare j1, j2 and j3 and set it to months to start with j. I then have to have a function declaration inside of this function expression j months and that declares a variable using let and sets it to may and then it logs to the console. Then we have a console log statement here that is using the variable declared here and then we invoke this declaration. So what is going to display the console? What are we going to see? And once again pause if you need to. Let me go ahead and refresh and we'll see what we get. We get a reference there. Short month is not defined. 
So short month is not available for this particular console log statement. And so we get a reference there. Now, would it change things if we moved this up here like that? Let's find out. What it changes is the fact that part of the JavaScript is able to execute this part here. That executes before we get a reference error. And so we get that at the top of the console. But even though this was declared, remember because it's a let variable, its scope is that function. And that's all. And so it's not available outside of that. And so we still get the uncaught reference there. Short month is not defined when we try to do this console log statement. Okay. Number two, we're doing a total of four of these. So just so you know how long I'm going at this. Okay, down to number three. This has to do with how JavaScript establishes its execution context when. Uh, first JavaScript starts running. All right, now notice how we have this set up. Put a semicolon there. We're calling a function. We declare a variable using var. And then the function is declared using a function declaration, not a function expression. And all of that's important. The fact that we use var and the fact that this is a function declaration. So what are we? what's going to happen here? What are we going to see on the console? Let me save that. Pause if you'd like. We refresh and we get my favorite season is undefined. Is that what you would have expected? So when the execution context is set up for JavaScript, anything with a var declaration is established with an undefined. That's before any code executes. Also, variable declarations are established in memory as well. So they exist. So we go ahead and invoke it up here, it already knows it's, it's available. And so it can run that function even though it's declared down here. However, when we get to displaying the variable using season, that variable is currently undefined because the code execution has not reached this line yet. Okay, So no value has been assigned to that variable, therefore we get undefined. Okay. Now, what would happen, how would this change if instead of a function declaration, I used a function expression? I'm going to go ahead and come out, comment out that function declaration. Now, how would this change? Well, let's find out. You can pause again if you'd like. Uncaught reference there. So it's uncaught reference there because we can't access it because it is a function expression. And so the function is not set up until the line, this line of code is executed, where with a function declaration, it is established prior to the execution, execution of lines of code. That doesn't happen with a function expression. And so that's why we get the uncaught reference there. We can't invoke that. So that also talks about a difference between function declarations and function expressions, which I can link to. All right, let me comment out this one. And we have one more. And this has to do with coercion and the double equals versus triple equals. So making sure that you understand the difference between double equals and triple equals. So we have a total of five console log statements. Console log compares these two objects. This one compares two strings. Notice the difference in the string. There is a space on this one, but it uses double equals. This one compares two strings using triple equals. The strings are the same. This one compares using double equals, a number versus a string. 
And this one compares using triple equals, have an expression over here compared to that number. So what is this going to show? What are we going to get? False, true, false, false. What is it going to show? All right, go ahead and pause if you'd like. Save that and we'll refresh. So we get false, false, true, true, true. So these are, these two objects contain exactly the same thing. However, objects are established in memory and then only the reference is kept. And so the two references are different because they're two separate objects. So they're not equal to one another because they are two separate objects. So we get false. And even though we use double equals, this string is still not the same. There is a space in this string. So we get false. Now these two strings are exactly the same, including, including the case. So uppercase J, uppercase J, uppercase F, uppercase F. So those are true. Now this uses the double equals. So with double equals, we can see coercion happening. And so it comes back as true that these two things are equal because the types can be coerced with double equals. And like I said, I can link to a tutorial on explaining this as well. And then finally, this is true as well. Because this expression is handled, it comes back with 900 and those two numbers are equal to each other, even with triple equals. So we get a true with that as well. All right, so how did you do with that? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully you did really well. And if not, hopefully you understand the reasons why things are happening the way they are with this code. These are important fundamentals, things that sometimes we forget when we're just getting into solving a problem in JavaScript, but these are important to remember. So hopefully that was helpful. All right, please hit that like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I really try to release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.